trail. Will was never able afterward to tell how long he spent with the Book of Grammarai. So much went into him from its pages, and changed him that the reading might have taken a year. Yet so totally did it absorb his mind that when he came to an end, he felt that he had only that moment begun. It was indeed not a book like other books. There were simple enough titles to each page, of flying, of challenge, of the words of power, of resistance, of time, of time through the doors. But instead of pre presenting him with a story or instruction, the book would give simply a snatch of verse or a bright image which somehow had him instantly in the midst of whatever experience was involved. He might read no more than one line. I have journeyed as an eagle, and he was soaring suddenly aloft as if winged learning through feeling, feeling the way of resting on the wind and tilting round the rising columns of air, or sweeping and soaring, of looking down at patchwork green hills capped with dark trees, and a winding, glinting river be between. And he knew as he flew that the eagle was only one, of, was one of only five birds who could see the dark, and instantly he knew the other four, and in turn he was each of them. He read, You come to a place where is the oldest creature that is in this world? And he that has, fa that has fared furthest afield, the eagle of Guarnabi, and Will was up on a bare crag of rock above the world, resting without fear on a gray black glittering shelf of granite, and his right side leaned against the soft gold feathered leg and folded wing, and his hand rested beside a cruel, steel-hard, hooked claw, while in his ear a harsh voice whispered words that would control wind and storm, sky and air, cloud and rain and snow and hail and everything in the sky save the sun and the moon, the planets and the stars. Then he was flying again, at large in the blue-black sky with the stars blazing timeless around his head, and the patterns of the stars made themselves known to him both like and unlike, the shapes and powers attributed to them to them by men long ago, the herdsman passed, nodding the bright star, Arcturus at his knee, the bull roared by, bearing the great sun, Aldebaran, and the small group of the Pleiades singing in the and singing in small melodic voices, like no voices he had ever heard, up he flew and outward through black space, and saw the dead stars, the blazing stars, the thin scattering of life that peopled the infinite emptiness beyond. And when he was done, he knew every star in the heavens, both by name and as charted astronomical points, and again as something much more than either. And he knew every spell of the sun and the moon, and he knew the, uni and he knew the mystery of Uranus and the despair of Mercury, and he had ridden on a comet's tail, so down out of the heavens the book brought him with one line, the wrinkled sea beneath him crawls, and down he came, plummeting, down toward the creeping wrinkled blue surface that changed as he grew closer and closer into a rearing sequence of great buffeting waves. Then he was in the sea, down out of the turmoil, through the green haze into an astonishing clear world of beauty and pitilessness and bleak cold survival. Each creature preyed on another, Nothing was safe from all, and the book taught Will here the, the patterns of survival against malevolence and the spells of sea and river and stream, lake and bird and fjord, lake and beck and fjord, and showed him how water was the one element that could in some measure defy all magic, for moving water would tolerate no magic, whether for good or evil, and would wash it away as if it had never been made. Through deeply sharp corals, the book sent him swimming among strange, waving fronds of green and red and purple, among rainbow brilliance, among rainbow brilliant fish that swam up to him, stared, flickered a fi flicked a fin or tail, and were gone. Past the black, unkind spirits of sea urchins, past soft, waving creatures that seemed neither plant nor fish, and then up on white sand, splashing through gold-flecked shallows into trees. Dense bare trees like roots ran down into the sea water all around him in a kind of leafless jungle, and in a flash Will was out of the tangle and blinking again at a page of the Book of Grammarai. I am free-fretted, and I flirt with wind, 
He was among trees then, spring trees tender with the new matchless green of young leaves, and a clear sun dappling them, summer, full of tr summer trees full of leaf, whispering massive dark winter firs that fear no master and let no light brighten their woods. He, le he learned the nature of all trees, the particular magics that are in oak and beech and ash. Then one verse stood alone in the page of the book. He that sees blowing the wildwood tree, and pewits circling their, wa their watery glass, dreams about strangers and yet may be dark to our eyes, alas. And into Will's mind, whirling him up on a wind blowing through and around the whole of time, came the story of the old ones. He saw them from the beginning, when magic was at large in the world, magic that was the power of rocks and fire and water and living things, so that the first men lived on it, and with it, as, as a fish lives in water, he saw the old ones through the ages of men who worked with stone and with bronze and with iron, with one of six great signs born each age. He saw one race after another come attacking his island country, bringing each time the malevolence of the dark with them, wave after wave of ships rushing inexorably at the shores. Each wave of men in turn grew peaceful as it grew to know and love the land, so that the light flourished again, but always the dark was there, swelling and waning, gaining a new lord of the dark, whenever a man deliberately chose to be changed into something more dread and powerful than his fellows. Such creatures were not born to their doom like the old ones, but chose it. The black rider he saw in all times from the beginning. He saw a time when the first great testing of the light came, and the old ones spent themselves for three centuries on bringing their land out of the dark, with the help, in the end, of their greatest leader, lost in the saving, unless one day he might wake and return again. A hillside rose up out of that time, grassy and sunlit before Will's eyes, with the sign of the circles and cross cut into its green turf, gleaming there huge and white in the Chillerton chalk. In the Chiltern chalk. I keep pronouncing that area wrong. It's Chiltern. Round one arm of the white cross, scraping at it with curious tools like long-bladed axes, he saw a group of figures dressed in green, small men made smaller still by the width of the great sign. He saw one of these figures whirl dreamlike out of a group toward him, a man in a green tunic with a short dark blue cloak, and a hood pulled over his head. The man flung wide his arms with a short bronze-bladed sword in one hand and a glinting chalice-like cup in the other, spun round and at once disappeared, then caught up by the next page, Will was walking along a path through a thick forest with some fragrant dark green herb under his feet, a path that broadened and hardened into stone, a well-worn undulating stone like limestone, and led him out of the forest until he was walking alone, until he was walking along a high windy ridge under a gray sky with a dark mist-filled valley below, and all the while as he walked, though no one walked with him, firmly into his mind. In procession came the secret words of power for the old ways, and the feeling and signs by which he would know henceforth anywhere in the world where the nearest old way ran, either in substance or as the ghost of a road. So it went until Will found that he was almost at the end of the book. A verse was written before him. I have plundered the fern through all secrets I spy, Old math, ap mathwine, know no more than I. Facing the cover, on the very last page, was a drawing of the six circle-crossed signs, all joined into one circle, and that was all.